Hi, I'm Dr. Bill Wyatt, and I'm a general dentist, but I've been practicing nothing but orthodontics for the, well, since 1970, and I am a member of the American Orthodontic Society. This is a, a society of general and pediatric dentists who are dedicated to teaching other general and pediatric dentists or any other dentist as far as that goes, orthodontics. Uh, we have a wonderful organization. We have a board certification in, in our organization. We have a annual meetings. We have our own journal. And it is a very efficient uh, organization for teaching. We have a group of excellent instructors That'll take you from the beginning into orthodontics and carry you on through as deep as you want to go in it. Uh, I've been doing this for a long, long time, and I'm wanting to just leave some of these things that I've learned in orthodontics uh, to whoever. And this, we're putting this in the YouTube. So this uh, video here will be about group movement of teeth in the correction of malocclusions. Now, I personally feel like it's better just to move teeth in groups, large groups, rather than to take them one at a time and move them back and have a space over there. So I'm going to try to show how this works in uh, this uh, video. And this is a post of, you know, people just move them one at a time. A lot of people feel like that's the way to do it, but I really don't. And I think you can move them with less energy and less mess, just taking a group of teeth and move them at one time. Uh, so we're going to try to do that in this uh, lecture. We've got three cases here that I want to show you. This first young lady is about 17 years old. She has a uh, class 2 malocclusion and she's got about a quarter of an inch over jet. I'll show you the models here. Well, you can see this. We would like to move this cuspid back to this point right here, and this tooth here, this whole thing, and of course bring the anterior teeth back over the lower anterior teeth. Now some of this correction can be done by moving the lower teeth forward as well as moving the upper teeth uh, backwards. So in doing this we use what we call as a Mitchell appliance. We've uh, developed an appliance for moving class twos that almost makes a person wear elastics. You know, they either have to wear them or they'll go out of whack in a hurry. So I'll probably cover a video on just this Mitchell appliance. We're not going to extract any teeth on this case at all. Now she's got a malocclusion, same class 2 on both sides. We're going to try to put this cuspid back in here and of course the same thing. Again we'll try to bring this lower motor will be out in something like this when you get through, through with the case. Uh, it'll amaze you what happens with just elastics if you uh, more or less force somebody to wear them 24 hours a day. Uh, looking from above uh, on both models we're going to hook up class 2's and you'll notice that these teeth will be rolled out to the side. This is not a big problem and both these second motors will be rolled out when they get uh, through with the class 2 correction, everything. Uh, now, to f first to, to use this appliance, you've got to line the teeth up so that these teeth are straight across here. These four front teeth have to be good and straight across the front. And you build up the lower arch as good as you can to sort of so resist the class 2 elastic. You're going to be pulling across there. So you do that just at first. So we took the young lady 
and we straightened everything out and had it there ready to go to correct the class 2 problem and we got her in and fixed the arch wires now to do this you have to be able to put a rectangular wire in the four front teeth up here and then we come out above the cuspid tooth between the cuspid and lateral and go up above all the other teeth back here so this doesn't you use an arch wire all the way over to level it out but when you go into this you take the other wire arch wire out and you use nothing but this rectangular wire that comes up goes back through the auxiliary tube on the six-year molars we use double tubes on our uh, actually triple tubes on the upper six and you've got a headgear tube your regular arch wire uh, goes in here and you've got an upper uh, tube right up here we put this Mitchell appliance in we also put uh, lip bumpers in that uh, also on the lower the six-year motor has a double tube on the um, excuse me I'll get this thing going here uh, sorry Okay, sorry for the interference there. Uh, the rectangular wire goes back through the auxiliary tube that you've got on the six-year molar, and you have a spring in between here. And you put a certain amount of pressure on this spring, and you put about two ounces more pressure on your class two elastic. Now this. Uh, rectangular wire doesn't touch anything except your your four anterior teeth out here goes up above and you put a little lock screw on this part you see to go back through I'm going to cover that uh, Mitchell appliance in detail later on so we won't have to uh, go through all that to begin today it's put on both sides of the mouth now and it uh, if the person does not wear the elastic they take the elastic out leave it out then this spring say it has 10 ounces of force on it on both sides that 10 ounces of force goes against these four anterior teeth and it makes these teeth hurt and so people put the elastic on and it's got about 12 ounces of force and that keeps the teeth from hurting but it also makes them move back the whole group of teeth move back you'll have to let me get down here and sh as we show you what happens on this case all right so we've got this same thing rigged up on both sides of the mouth set the bottom arch up as solid as you can i frequently like to put a little acrylic in the occlusion of the lower anterior i mean the lower teeth really so it slides in the correct the class two a lot easier the upper jaw slide right over it and it also holds it in line better so here we go we rig this thing up and have this young lady we sit down and impress on her that she has to have wear these elastics if she doesn't her upper front teeth are going to come out like mad and they will and in fact when she takes the rubber bands off they'll hurt so they wear their elastics so this is something that just virtually makes them wear the elastics all right I told her all this and sent her home I said now you've got to wear these elastics but I failed to impress on her that she had to come back so she waited about Oh, it's uh, two months or maybe a couple of weeks longer than that. And she came in wearing the rubber bands. Her teeth were not sore. Nothing seemed to be wrong. And this cuspid tooth that was out here somewhere went back that far. Now, this arch wire 
that came out of the lateral and went up above the cuspid dropped down and fell into the cuspid slot right here or it probably would have come down even further so do class 2 elastics put a downward pressure on the anterior teeth they certainly do and they also bend the second molars that are attached back here they will come buckly when you put this on there but it corrects the glass too i mean it really corrects the glass too so if you want to do this now we had a we had a intruding arch on here to bring these teeth down now because we got to jump them back over on the other side but when we came back we told her you do not have to wear these elastics anymore <laughs> take them out it's because we've gone from a class two about a quarter inch out here back to a, she's a class three now i took her jaw and i tried to manipulate her jaw back as far as possible and i could get it back to where the upper anterior teeth touched the lower anterior teeth but i could not get it back I uh, couldn't take the lower jaw back where the lower anterior teeth were underneath the upper anterior teeth. It just would not go back. So we didn't panic or anything. We just said, well, we've got to take this wire out. We took the rectangular wire out of her mouth and we put a light uh, flexible wire in the upper arch. And I want to show you these uh, teeth here. They were going straight back. You see, they're moved out to the side. The class two elastics tend to pull the molars out like that. And they'll do it every time. They may not bend out if you've got a real stiff arch wire, but the whole darn thing will go out, you see. So uh, that's just one thing. With, and they'll also elevate the teeth uh, like that. Now, elevate the molars okay we took this wire out and we took a bunch of pictures and everything and we took a little flexible woven wire and just engaged it in these teeth all the way back and told her to come back in a couple of weeks do not wear the elastics or anything so this is the way it looked I took pictures of it and everything and sent her home and then two weeks she came back and the teeth were over the hump like that they had risen up these cuspids went down and these teeth went up and the thing leveled out in two weeks she wasn't griping about being sore or anything i x-rayed and the teeth looked perfectly fine but it had corrected the class two problem in just about a couple of months you know maybe a little bit longer than that so this is something we started using at that time and we use this on people that we have difficulty with them using elastics and they correct like that so this is a group movement of teeth that's what i wanted to stress and we're back here with the cuspid lined up like it should be in this groove and the cuspid was sticking way out here somewhere you know, go back and look at that deal and you can see where the cuspid was and this one was almost corrected it came back so we i took selfs and i'll show you the self later on the teeth are lined up good these teeth the cuspid was not in it neither was the bi first and second bicuspids the molar was in it these teeth were completely on their own and they went back and there was no space in between these teeth at all this was okay back at the back now this the tooth here is that kind of out to the side a little bit okay now on the lower arch uh, we this line back up again this arch wire we put an arch wire in there and this of course it stayed it 
came back in line after a, a two or three weeks. That moved back in place good. So here we put an upper rectangular wire and a lower rectangular wire. We corrected all the root alignment and everything. Just corrected that at all group movement. And we were through with this case in a very short length of time. Now everything went off good. And then I'll, I'm going to show you the cephalometric. It'll surprise you what that looks like. And this looks good now. This lined up. Everything's good. We get everything ideal. And this is uh, six, 16 of 87 right here. When at this point, uh, forget this when we started, but it wasn't too long before that, you know. We had to use a little class two elastics later to pull it back just slightly on one side, but not much. Bottom teeth are lined up good. Now that's 87. Okay, we take her, we're just about ready to take her out of the braces. Everything seems to be stable, staying. Now right here, this slipped some, so we come in and read, add, some, add some class 2 correction over here and correct that. The other side stayed fine. Now the right side of the mouth, this is 88 before we took her out. It's 4 of 88. It's slightly overcorrected there. The bottoms lined up good. Then the left side is corrected too and stayed back. And so we're ready to take her out of this. That's 4 of 88. All right, I took the young lady out and put her in wraparound retainers. I had just the upper retainer and I bonded, I think, these teeth together down here on the bottom. But she's wearing a splint right now. Well, what happened? It, the young lady came down with a TMJ problem. And I wonder, well, what on earth did I do that caused this TMJ problem? I couldn't figure out anything that would have caused it. And I asked her all sorts of questions. Have you been hit in the mouth? Have you had any accidents? Anything uh, banged your jaw up or caused the TMJ? And she said, nothing, nothing. Well, I walked out of the room. I stayed in there so long I'd gotten behind and I was gone and working on another patient or two. And then the young lady that was in the room with her came in and said, well, Dr. White, this, this lady was in a car accident just a, a few weeks ago or a couple of weeks ago. And somebody hit her on her side and knocked her out of the car on the other side. And she just had flat f forgotten to tell. She didn't tell us anything, you know, that whether what had happened to her. And so if I give you the advice, ask people all kind of questions and see something happened that made this TMJ work. So it was an insurance case. I sent her over to Dr. Charles Holt, who does nothing but TMJ stuff, and he took care of it, but later found out that uh, uh, all the women in her family had TMJ problems, whether they got hit with a car or not. But uh, anyway, that cleared up real good, and, and we went ahead and finished uh, finish this out. This is her retainer. I never use any type of retention. Yeah, I say that. It has wires running across I don't like to have any wire in between the teeth because they tend to bite on the wire and the teeth aren't allowed to erupt into each other. Uh, we put a bite plate on everybody with them sitting with their head correctly uh, when we close to so that we hold the bite at that position. She had a little bit of a close bite, not, not any big, big thing. Now that was the splint the guy put in and we 
brought her jaw out and kept it comfortable and got over the problem with that pretty quick. Okay, here we are going to go in and show you the panorexis. Here she is, 15 years and 8 months. This was in 86, you see, right there. Uh, I thought she was 17 when we started, but she must have been that when we finished. Now you can see the way the jaws close. She's got her mouth open, so you can't look at the jaw relationship with her. Now here we fix this appliance up, and this is the rectangular wire that's in there, you see. And it goes up over the cuspidia, goes back into the auxiliary button on the upper arch, and we had this intruding wire down here to level this out, and this was uh, 2 of 87, and she's 16 and 4 months at this time. Uh, here's 1982. Uh, no, 87, excuse me. 7 of 87, age 16, 9. And we had pretty well got the thing on the road here. It's going pretty good. That's the third uh, panorex that we took in doing this. And here is the fourth panorex after we, that's 1988. And she was grown and we had no room back here for the wisdom teeth, so we recommend removing all the wisdom teeth at that, that point. Uh, here is the self from the start, where the bottom jaw was back, you see, and just a mild class two, but it had about a quarter of an inch of overjet here, and some bite closure, and just a you know, mild class two, not no big big problem there and now we put this appliance in and she went home and but didn't come back for two months or a little more and it took the maxilla and just pushed it back to it was a class three and it literally laid these teeth out and it was pulling on this going forward and then pulling on this going back and it pushed this whole thing back in uh, just about well, just a little over two months' time, it took the whole thing back to class one. Well, we put that soft wire in here and and correct this thing corrected itself in about two weeks. The only thing, it went back to that point in two weeks. Almost, and her teeth, she never complained about them being sore or anything, but that much movement took place in just that short a time. Now that should tell us something in in doing this. Let me go back, show you where that was, and then it comes back to that point. This is where we finished her, and that's about as good as you want to get as far as cephalometrics. Now we have to get the wisdom teeth out here. Uh, so this is where we finish this this woman up. We left her in this position. We took her out of everything, and we followed her for several years later, and it stayed, it held good, had no problem with it. Now we're going to show you another case. Uh, the second case is a woman in her 40s with, uh, she had all kind of dental problems. She came in, and... Uh, she had uh, some uh, problem with her skin and everything. It was, uh, so we'll look at her later, about 10 years after we get, get through with it. Uh, no big facial problem, anything. Uh, her anterior teeth were pretty much where we wanted this to be, but we've got these cuspids sticking out on the sides up here. And yet this is in a class 2 problem both sides back here so let me get around where we can show this a little better okay on the right side of the mouth she had a bad wisdom tooth that was decayed 
and really eaten out. So we plan to take this tooth out. See. Now we have a class two situation with everything back here in this cuspid. We want it. I'm sorry. We want this cuspid back in this position. And I want all these teeth moved back as a group into class one. In other words, that's what we want to take this tooth back to where it's actually move in like that. Uh, this thing writes so much. Puts a little deal out I can't hardly keep it from doing it. Uh, let's see now the other side of the mouth had a rotten, very decayed <laughs> bicuspid here. Just blown out and everything. So we were going to take this tooth out and then we're going to take this tooth right here and put it into this spot and then take the cuspid and put it down in the, the class one place for the cuspid. But we didn't really want to move these teeth back anything any to speak of, so we're, we're not going to do anything with these. But now this we're going to bring forward and the roots See, she lost a six-year molar in here, uh, probably after she was 12 or 14 or something. And this 12, this second molar, this is a second molar. It's leaned over from something like, like this, you know, coming down. The roots are way back in here, and we're going to have to bring these roots forward in here, and then bring these roots forward from the second molar. These two are kind of lined up and we're going to try to pick them up over here and straighten them out there and bring them down. Now this area right here we're going to just keep these teeth in line and move the bicuspid, the first bi where the second bi is and the cuspid where the bicuspid are pretty much where the bicuspid is and we'll probably bring these roots some forward at the same time and maybe bring these cuspids back a little. Bring the root of them back anyway. And you can watch this on the panorexes as we go. Now if we take the upper model and look at it, what we've got this bad tooth right here. And so we want to move this one into this space. And then move this cuspid here and bring this lateral back out here, this area. The lateral will come out, but we're going to pretty much leave this, these anterior teeth where they are, and bring this one out some, and this will come back. This tooth right here will come back here. And we're going to take these, these teeth on this side of the mouth back all the way. See, these will go distal all the way. Everything over here will go back. And you can watch. Now, if you look at the model here, you see the cusp, the molars are lined up, the six year molars lined up, the bicuspids are lined up, and these are lined up, and the center is going right down through the middle of it here. So let's watch this move as we go. And you can see what actually happens in here. All right, we used that appliance to back up one side, but not the other. We didn't have to do that. Now, watch this gap. We'll keep this gap about what it is while we pull the root structure forward in here. And we'll bring both these teeth forward, and they'll be leveled out when we get, get through with it. You do that with a certain little spring-like the arch where I'll be going down, bringing and tying this and closing that up over on that side. So just kind of we'll watch that as we go. Now here we've come in with this what we call the Mitchell appliance and we put a lot of force on this side to move these teeth back and not so much on the other side where we didn't want to uh, move them very much so you can do it unilaterally when you go through it. So that's coming on pretty good and we'll show that to you in just a minute up above.
just the class two elastics. Now notice the space has not gotten any closer, but the teeth are setting straighter up. So as we correct the root problem here, we will level out the crowns of the teeth as the roots come forward. And then we try to get these roots back some, but I don't think we ever, we just didn't put enough force on them. They would have come back. So everything else on the bottom is, is going good. All right. I don't remember just how many months we're into it. But we have not moved these teeth back. They stayed where they were. And the we extracted a bicuspid here, moved this bicuspid down to that point, pulled the cuspid into here, and brought the lateral back out into that space right there. Uh, now that's individual movements there. But over on this side, we did a group movement. We took all these teeth backwards. We took them distal. And then we brought the cuspid down into place there. And the bicuspid followed. This whole thing went back when we, when we did that. We just took everything back on that side. And you can see how this side of the mouth moved back. These molars were even when we started, you see. You can go back and look at it later on if you want to. And I'm going to show you this lady several years later. So this was the Mitchell appliance pushing that back in. Sorry. Now here we've got that motor back further than we want, so we pulled it forward again. And these two teeth that was going up here, that'll bring coming back down. That comes in. The space is still about the same or a little bit less right there, but the roots are much further forward. And there it is. We pretty well finishing it up, getting pretty well. Now the gap is still open over here on the left side. Uh, but the roots are much further, and you see how these teeth have leveled out right in here. Now this is difficult for some people to do uh, because they don't tilt the arch wire properly when they're pulling the space together. You have to kick the roots further forward when you're doing this. And we would like for everybody that does orthodontics to to do as good a job as you possibly can with it. Now here we're not quite into class one yet. So we continue the cuspid down on this side is getting pretty good. We've got this back further than we wanted. Now we're going to pull it back forward again to close that up. Now the gap is actually as wide as it was when we started, but the roots are much closer together. The midline's pretty well on. It's holding. And the cuspid now is in a good class one relation on the right side of the mouth and also on the left side of the mouth. So we still are trying to bring this this motor further forward in here. We'll keep tying it back here till we get it back to where we want it. And that's holding on that side. Now, when you look at the two arches, this tooth is actually one bicuspid further forward than the one over on the, uh, right, this is the right side, this is the other left side. And it's actually one bicuspid further forward. These were moved individually. These were moved as a group. And so I'm, I'm saying from my experience, it's better to move teeth in a group than it is just to try to slide, I mean to 
if I tried to slide one of these back and then the other one and the other one, it would have taken a long time to do it. It's much quicker just to move a group of teeth back. Now I'm going to stand on that, and I have done that for years and years and years, and I hope you trust me in going in there and doing that. Maybe uh, you think that, I uh, know some people think they just can't do that, but they can. Now the space is almost together, very little gap in here. When we finish it, we'll close that gap up. Now that's pretty well where we're going to finish. Okay, I'm going to go through some x-rays with you, and you'll see that these, we took this wisdom tooth out, and we backed these teeth up and made not a whole lot of space. We didn't want to take out a lot. And then we, we uh, on the other side of the mouth now, we'll take, well, on the right side, this is, we brought all this back. You see, this came back over here. We more or less left these teeth where they were. We extracted. So your bad tooth was where you wanted it on both sides of the mouth. That doesn't happen that way very often. But this tooth right here is just blown out that cuspid. I mean, this, this uh, wisdom tooth. Now, this bicuspid was shot too. So we took it out. Now, we bring these back and fill that space as we pull these roots forward, you see, and the gap stayed the same until we got through and we brought them up. I hope we closed it all the way. All right, here we are. You see where the roots are on those teeth? And you'll see the crowns are leveled out. Now we got the... The wisdom tooth over here is about halfway sitting on that, so it'll be fine to leave it that way. Now, this is, and here's where she's missing that tooth. We brought those in place over there. Uh, let's see. Now, I should have tipped this one a little further about. Right there, so then both of these needed to be tipped out before I took this stuff off, and I don't think I did it ideal. Now, they, after several years, it's 1988, uh, they have separated to some extent. Now, this has stayed good. It's got a little bit of open. Now, that's still in the braces, though. Now, here's 98, and we started that in the 80s, and after all this time, this lady moved out of town, and she was gone for a long time, but she brought her son back in for me to work on him, and before I'd even look at him, I got her in the chair and took a bunch of pictures of her. Do you remember this space? Right here, these roots are good, the bones good on the teeth, both sides good, in here is good, everything looks super good. And it's just, this is 98, and I think it was 80 something while we finished her earlier than that, and the thing has held up great to this period of time. Now, let's look at the this was this was 80, 89. I think we still had her in the lower braces in 89, but not. So it was about 10 years later you see her. Okay, let me show you her pictures after. Now the lady wears a retainer. You see the retainer mark on the roof of the mouth right there. I'm sorry that got something over a picture there was the only one I had. Uh, she needs to have them scale good. Okay, here she is in uh, 98. Her skin is <laughs> nicer 
In other words, she got her teeth looking real good. She had these jagged cuspids sticking out and didn't take care of her teeth and everything, but now she does take care of them, and she's proud of her teeth and her smile, and the teeth look good. You see those cuspids sticking out like that? Now they're back in place, and the upper teeth are laterals look a little wide there, but uh, that's a beautiful set of teeth, and that's that's 98, and the other one was a, uh, I don't know when we started or anything, I can't read that deal. Here is the, that's, 90, that's 86 and 98 from the time we started her. And you see those teeth right there, they're still lined up. This is out in front of these. And the thing has worked out great for her. Now, I'm not perfect down in the bottom. I didn't even bond a 3 to 3 on this. I should have done that. But anyway, after 10 years, it's looking quite good. And there's her smile. Now, on case number 3, I'm going to go in and show you uh, just one more case if I know you're probably getting tired of it. Uh, this is an adult female. And she's in her 50s. Has a perfect class 1 on the right side of the mouth and a complete class 2 on the left side. And the class 2 side was moved as a unit into class 1. And she was a very good patient. And she wore everything good. I put a spring on it, but I didn't have to do that. And this was 1987 here when we uh, started this case. And good facial structure, though. I mean, this is a good facial height in here, and, and everything looks good. But she was totally class one on one side, totally class two on the other. Now this is frequently you get uh, some class two on one, class one on the other, but this one was totally that way. <coughs> so the right side of the mouth there is just perfect class one. You can't hardly beat that, you see. Now on the left side of the mouth, it's a perfect class two. I mean, it absolutely class two on the left side of the mouth. So we're going to move this side back and maybe bring this forward a little bit, but we'll have to change the whole shape of the arches and everything. The uh, arch form will have to be completely redone. You see, as you go back, the bite closed too on the class two side, the, the class one side is not closed down like that. Let me go ahead and show you. See, it's not as closed over here as it is over on the other side of the mouth. That's an 87. All right, so <coughs> we start out. I didn't use this appliance at all. I just used class two elastics on it. And we opened the bite, you see, and got it in a good rectangular wire. And we're using midline elastics, and we used a double class two elastic over here. And she wore this, I mean, she really was a good patient. I mean, she stayed with me, and uh, we carried this on through. This is the class two side I hooked up on the lateral and went to the lingual side. Let me <coughs> show you how to do that. That works good. Now we went to the buckle out here on the lower buckle and then came on to the uh, lingual button on the uh, six year motor, I believe, there and, and pull that side back too. So this is just plain old elastics. And this thing just moved back. Now your whole arch form has to adjust when you do that. You can't do this without changing the whole arch form as you go back. 
Now, the bottom's lined up, you know, it's, it's lined up good, and everything's going good. And I thought, well, she having to wear this rubber band all the time. I'll just put this spring in. So we got a little spring, and I hooked it up, and she wore it for a while, just a short time, and it was, she'd tend to bite it, and I just took the thing out after a while, and just finished it up with elastic, you know. That's all I needed in her case. <coughs> now the midline zone. This is 1988. And we've finished the upper. It's in 98, 88 right now. And the right side that was class one, still class one. And the arch form. You balance them out. And here, I don't know what year that is right there, but it's holding at that point real good. It's stayed. As far as I know, this lady, as long as I watched her, never went back into that class two on one side, class one here. Now we put a good wraparound retainer, nothing going over the top with a bite plate. And so the bite can't deepen. As long as they wear this thing, this will pretty well stay where it is. Now I put something <coughs> on the bottom. I seem like we use a little spring retainer, which I dislike, and it violates my <laughs> rules there. It something across uh, in between the teeth on that. I don't approve of that now at all. Uh, but one thing I want you to watch. These cuspids are spread apart. But you try to get the roots of these teeth back. You see, they'll, they'll be back. And then the cuspids don't tend to go back forward. This is 89. Let me go on. I'm not sure later on down the line. That's 89. And that's spread out good. We've got a little gingival problem here on that tooth but I think she takes care of that that's a bad picture this one's working okay here there's another 89 and I don't have the date on that 89 again all right we'll go back I'm going to show you the models on it we spread the cuspids out but we try to get the roots behind the crowns when you do that. And you see how these roots are angled down like this? I don't have any problem with those roots trying to go back. This got a little problem with the gingival tissue right there. And the midline's a little bit off, but not much. She wears her retainer too. I mean, she stays with it. Now here's 96. That was 89 before, and so here's about seven years later. <coughs> Excuse me. The cuspids are back, you see. And they're staying back like that. There's a bicuspid there. Now the that's that's ninety six. Ninety six again. Okay, that's ninety six. This is class one two. That was a class two side. Class one's lined up good, middle line a little off. Now there's where we started from. There's the midline was off on the class two side. It is on over here. This is not as class one as the other side. This points a little off there, but not much. And that's uh, several years later. Now when you look at the case to start with, I mean, this side was 
off, you see. Uh, <coughs> that was 1987 when we started the case. And you see the crowding we've got. Now, there's the upper arch in, in 2002 now. Let me go back. This was 87. So that's 3 and 10. And that's about 15 years, you see. It's back from there. And here it is 15 years later. See? Staying like that. Okay, let's go to the, that's the upper arch. It's back. Now the lower arch in 2002, I'm sorry, this cuts off this, but you can see it's straight. And the cuspids are spread out in here. Now look where the cuspids were in 87. And you see the narrowness of this arch. Right in here, and you know we were taught, or I wasn't taught. I didn't go to the regular orthodontic school, so I didn't know that you couldn't widen these cuspids, and it didn't look normal, good to me. And I heard Dr. Little, who was the one up in Washington, I think, that came up with all this research. That if you spread the cuspids out, they were going to go back in 10 years. And it didn't make sense to me. But what I think happened, the students in the school, when they spread the cuspids, they just moved the crowns back and the roots were still where they were. And so naturally those crowns went back over there. Now if you take them and put the roots behind the crowns, I have not had any problem with them just going back to where they want to go. And I've spread out hundreds and hundreds of them. I mean, a lot, maybe a few thousand of them. I don't know. No, but I've done a lot of orthodontics. And I've been doing it for 50-some for odd years, really. So uh, you can do that. So just believe me. But you've got to put the roots back behind the crowns. For and there's where the crowns are right now. And there's where they were. And that's just a mild case. I've shown that one case that 20 years out, and they were twice. The cuspids spread out twice of what they were. Now there's the bite plate we put in there. Now, I had this little spring retainer, but I do not ever use those anymore. We come in and bond something on the back of these. I don't like because you're going to bump that silly wire right there, and I don't like those. But in this case, we did, but I don't use them anymore. Now, here's her face at 91, and there's her teeth, 91. There's the deal when we started. There it is, the 88. She's still got that impacted cusp, uh, by, I mean, impacted wisdom tooth back there. I'm sorry. And there we are. That's 89, 88. And we finished her at that point. That's the last picture I think I have of her. But as far as I know, this lady still has perfect teeth are just well, as near perfect as I can get them. And that concludes this deal on group movement of teeth. And I hope you'll try that. And it kind of showed several other things in here like expansion of the lower cuspids. You can do it if you'll put the roots behind the crowns. I don't think you have a problem with them coming back. So I'm going to stop this and uh, We'll close, close it up. Let me see if I can get this over. Okay.